All right, let's. Uh, should we bring Buddha Ben in? Ah, uh, sure. All right, Buddha Ben. Admitted to the uh, to the chat room. Here. I guess what is he? So, and this is like to me. There's not <laughs> an opening day, literally like around the corner. There he is, Buddha. Yo. What's up? I can pull my what's up? Did you hear our our snafu there? I couldn't hear it. Oh, I just okay. this is the first I could hear. All right. So the question, Buddha, that we gotta start with, and I was saying to you, how many podcasts do you think with opening day? literally like 24 hours away and it's like do you want bryce hopper i was like no i'll take buddha ben <laughs> i love that i appreciate it thank you for having me on yeah no i'm excited to have you you know you're one of the few guys who i feel like has left barstool and i still like truly like and at first i'm like he'll be back at some point i don't know now buddha's running his empire and you're wearing the sweatshirt now always marketing and, and so I was in L.A. and we went out once, but you hung out with our guys a bunch, right, Buddha? Yeah, I saw uh, Spider Cream and then I think uh, Three Nights Straight uh, while they were here. So I want to have you on because I think most of Barstool who, who follows it, like the real fans are all know who you are and aware of you. You're one of the more unique guys, and I, I didn't get to all of it, but I'd love just for, for everybody like, we know you're doing the art. We know you're doing the sweatshirts, the NFTs, the Buddha buds. Like, how has your transition to LA been? And like, what is your the Buddha Ben Empire look like at this moment? Um, yeah. So when I first moved out here, I was doing music videos at first, just to kind of sustain living out here. And I came up with the Buddha's buds idea um, back in uh, November, like 2019. I was. Uh, I've had the name Buddha's Buds for a while. Like, uh, I've always wanted to do like a dispensary or something like Even that. Even though you are not called... a member of the Monster Hits Only Club yet. No, not not uh, officially. No. Mhoc Buddha, light that thing up. You're known to smoke weed. <coughs> no, you're out for making. <coughs> I was trying to do my best, Monster. No, no that was bad. Um, but. I've always wanted to do that. And uh, so I've had the name Buddha's Buds. And when I moved out here, I wanted to do something with it. And um, and then I started writing this cartoon and drawing these pictures, this little Buddha character and his uh, like his buds, which are his friends, like Buddha's Buds. And so I had this cartoon world that I've been working on and I've wanted to make it into an actual cartoon that I would try to pitch to networks and do that. So then I was writing that and then when the lockdown started, I just randomly started painting. I'd never really painted before. I've always just drawn. And um, I was posting the paintings of the Buddha character. And that's kind of like around March, I thought like I was going to have to move home because like I just had no way to make money when everything locked down here. And then I started releasing the paintings and those just happened to people were asking to buy them. And then I made a website, started uh, selling prints, stickers, paintings. Um, I was trying to do uh, lighters. I ran into trouble with like regulations for mailing those. And then uh, I ended up doing the hoodies, started uh, another website that was uh, a hoodie company. It's uh, high, high fashion for high people by a high person is the motto of the brand. And um, I've done two drops since then and uh, or two hoodie drops and wait, a t-shirt drop. Wait, what was it? Say that again, the motto? It's high fashion for high people by a high person, or it's high quality, high fashion for high people by high persons, three or four of them. But, um, and then, uh, I've done three drops with that. And now I'm, uh, trying to figure out, uh, what the next steps are like, um, just cause I I'm doing all the hoodie drops and stuff where it's like, it's just me. So I'm getting like my last drop, I got like 23 boxes of hoodies, like just in my apartment that I, I ship them all, package them all myself. So it's like, I'm trying to do bigger releases soon of like uh, like a, a full line. So I'm kind of just trying to figure out now like what the next steps are realistically. Welcome um, to the early Barstool years when I had my parents over shipping my dad on his hands and knees trying to pack t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the one he was packing was who else seen the leprechaun? I remember my, my, my mom and I would pack 20 shirts for every one that my dad got into the envelope. And then when I told them like he didn't have to do it, he got angry. So take me back to you, which caught me off guard. 
And and the reason I think uh, that you said was you want to do your own thing with the music videos, but take your take us back to the thought process of when you left Barstool and headed headed west. Like what what was going on in your brain there? Um, I really I wanted to try just doing my own things. I've I've uh, like I've always been like kind of like always pictured myself just like working for myself. So I I like um out of high school i was doing music videos uh doing different uh filming on different tours um just doing those types of things uh i did a little freelance work um with companies but then uh like working at barstool is basically essentially working for yourself um but then uh i'd say like uh eventually i, I was doing a lot of projects that were just um like working like uh like other people's projects and whatnot and um I wanted to try just building something for myself. And also like I there, I'd say there's part of it where it's like, I knew I can try to build something while at Barstool, like for myself, but like there's part of it that I wanted to prove to like to myself that I can do something on my own and, and build it from the ground up and like kind of just to like prove to myself really. So that was kind of, that's part of the uh, thought process really like uh, just wanting to try to do something on my own and like proving it to myself really. So how much of, and, and I have no idea, you, 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 I don't know what you're going to answer this, how much of the success of what you're doing with the sweatshirt drops and the art would you attribute to the fact that the Barcelona audience knows who you are and likes you oh, versus a lot. a lot? Yeah, so it's the Barcelona crowd. I'd say a lot for sure in terms of exposure. Like uh, I'd say pre Barstool, I probably had like, uh, like 3,000 followers on Twitter and like, and then probably the same on Instagram and then like I'm at like 14,000 now on Twitter so I mean that's a lot of that is attributed to the Barstool audience I like, think that's uh, one of the unique things about us versus almost everywhere else is people like Buddha who I don't think you came in being like and in fact I know you didn't because you didn't at times you're like I don't want to be on camera but you come in in roles that aren't necessarily camera facing, but if you're a unique personality, there's no way that you don't end up just in the story. I mean, some of my favorite videos are still you guys and Storm Chasers. <laughs> like you, the, you, Caleb, and Roan in the yellow rain jackets, like mm -hmm. just at these venues. Man, like Buddha's in the middle of it. He's smoking weed because he thinks he's going to die. Yeah, very, <laughs> very uniquely like barstool and something that happens. And, and you know, you, I, I like that just struck me as so funny. But you, became a character and you had rivals with mike mm -hmm. the bike who you truly did hate um shout out mike the bike shot you know i saw him during a pizza review i don't know if you ever saw i, I saw that video that he, <laughs> he just ran up on you right yeah and i was like i have no idea who this guy is and he like took his guy he's like it's me i'm like who the fuck are you like i haven't seen you in five years i i'd have no idea that's mike the bike you knew that was mike the bike yeah. I, i'm team porn i'm disappointed I'm go press go. All right, that was Mike the Bike. For people at home, Mike the Bike used to be an intern, and then he got in a big fight with Buddha Ben, and they became. Would, we cool now though. We're cool. You and Buddha Ben are friends now. People, uh, have, people have no idea what we're talking about. Like, yeah, so. that, that would have terrified me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's me. Question now, moving on. Another incident. And I still don't know, and that's one of the things I think I love about you, Buddha. You always have me sort of guessing. The Roan painting debacle was it i'm under the impression this was not like a wwe thing like you were legitimately mad that he took your painting correct yeah so i mean he he did this all for do like, you know what this is so Eddie? he stole the painting but it might have been a setup. i don't know i don't, I don't know think it thing. was so no, yes so he, go ahead tell the story he uh, I got booked uh, for a freelance shoot for the the bear, uh, the 4th of July bear eating. Roan came out here to film the bear in California. And he came to my apartment the night before the shoot. And like, just to like see me, I didn't see him forever. And um, he was like, I'm going to be filming stool scenes. So like get some behind the scenes footage to put in. And he brought a little GoPro and uh, just he had a, a uh, suitcase with him because I got all these props for him set to my apartment and he brought in the suitcase acting like he was getting his props at some point during the I was like here on my laptop and he's behind me back there he went in my room and swapped out 
a fake frame of replica of one of my paintings with a real painting that I was selling. A week passes. I, I don't know. It looked exactly How the same. There, he, he, he did a lot of groundwork. He like, I mean, I talked to Ron frequently and, and he, I trust him. So he, he asked me questions like, where do you get your paintings framed? I'm trying to get frames for my apartment. And he, I told him my place in LA, which was stupid of me. And he was well, like, hard he, to know. He's running an underground. Like I didn't know exactly. it was this detailed. This is yeah. This, and this he is like, he called my frame guy in LA got the exact same frame, same name on it, everything. He had the scan replica of my painting. Like the only, he put a little change in it. And um... since I've been helping him out the whole time, I have the comfortability that I could just ask him, where are you getting your frames from? Now I have the place he's getting his frames from, the actual digital print of the painting itself. And so all I needed to do was co-conspire with a couple of people and fold them in. And suddenly it was printed out. But I've got the fucking counterfeit in my fucking hand. So a week later, I'm like working on on prints and like going to compare the color to like the original painting. And I noticed that it's fake because he took my character and added a middle finger to the character, like the character giving the middle finger. And I this is like a week after Ron's not even in my head at this point. So I'm like, <laughs> I start freaking out. I'm like, and this is like mid quarantine like july so like no one had been here like um so i started thinking like how could this have happened i'm thinking like my framing guy did he swap this out did the printing guys that scanned it and i'm like freaking out and uh i I'm, like calling the framing guy i like blaming him like asking him i didn't blame him at first but he got very defensive and then i started blaming well, him. well i mean and the then... frame guy you're accusing him of like <laughs> art theft the first thing I said on the phone was, hey, I'm not accusing you of stealing this, but I want to get to the bottom of it. And then he said, I think you're accusing me. <laughs> that, that he got very defensive. But then, then like 20 minutes later, it clicked that it was Roan. And I called him. He denied it for like a minute. What the fuck did you do with my boat ID? What? Wait, what'd you do with it? What do you mean? I know you did something. I don't know how you pulled this off. I don't know what you did. How, where, where, where is it? Tell me where it is. What are you talking about? I'm not going to play along with this fucking game. You're the only person who's been in my fucking apartment. The only person who came in my room. The only person who's been here. The only person who's here. I know you took it. You replaced it with the, the boot up giving the finger. Dude, I don't, what do you I mean? You asked, you asked me where I got my shit framed. You got it framed at the same place. Dude, I don't know what you mean. I'm not playing this game. All right, bro, hear me out, dude, hear me out. This is, this is, this is a, this is an all time marketing ploy. This is the only, this is the only what. This is the only way to get eyes on this painting. Are you fucking joking me? It's the only way. You're fucking joking me. You know I just fucking called the fucking framing guy? And then uh, he admitted to it. And yeah, I, I was very mad. And yeah. It, it, so, so just from your perspective, yeah. uh, uh, Eddie, yeah. I got called into Erica's <laughs> office at one was point. Was that serious? Yeah. She's like, we have a major problem. Like, Buddha's gonna like come after us for theft. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what world are we in? And I didn't like sleep for like two days straight. Uh, pro post this incident, like, um, just because it was like, I'm a, like, Roan was like, uh, I was trying to deal with it with Roan and then getting the painting sent back to me. I didn't have as many paintings I had at this one. This was a very valuable asset to me at the time, and I was trying to get it sent back to me. And, so what uh, was Roan's mo? When well, he uh, he was, what was he doing? Um, I think he told me. It's hard to it's hard to know with Roan. Um, <laughs> in his video, he claims it's for like um, he wanted to prove that he can do a heist. Um, <laughs> to me, he told me, like he was like it's to promote your artwork. He was like this is the only way to get eyes on the paintings and stuff. He was saying he was working as like a pseudo manager at the time for me. Um, and uh, 
yeah, they, it, I was more mad that he was like, he stole his painting. He was like, uh, he was like, this is how to get eyeballs in the painting is like stealing it and flying across the country with it, which I get in retrospect, it was good promotion. Like it ended up being good promotion and like a, a good like storyline for my paintings. And later down the line, that painting could be more valuable with like the history the, behind it. Yeah, the wrong. But, st- so where are you guys at now? I think we're good. I haven't like I haven't spoke to him as much frequently since then. Um, but I still speak to him. What about um, your frame guy? Is it awkward when you go in there now? I haven't gone back since. <laughs> um, I I did one round of business with this guy and then I was terrified to ever go back. I, I called him immediately after getting off the phone with Roan and like apologize, which like he, I wish his brain worked better because he, at one point, like he should have known that what I was talking about, cause he framed my painting and then ended up framing the replica for Roan. And like, if he put two and two together on the phone, I was like, he could have realized that like, I gotta be honest though, ran- Buddha, like, if you're just a frame guy, I don't think you think there's like uh, he framed the frame yeah, guy. Yeah, what is, what is that Bronson, uh, the guy who played Nano, the guy Bronson the, Pinchot? Yeah, he's in like a heist movie, a painting heist movie. I don't think you think there's some high. I mean, think about the story you just told. Like, come on, how's this guy not put together <laughs> that we're in the middle of the uh, or or maybe it's the the gold the Thomas Crown affair essentially something like that. I mean, and again, for I feel people, like frame guys should know that they could frequently be accomplices to art heists. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, and people always say as Barstool, like, there'll never be another Barstool. This story that we just told, that Buddha just told, and he tells it seriously. <laughs> You got to be out of your mind to think something like this is going on anywhere else. Art, art heist, art heist. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, it's just, it was honestly. I thought it was an inside job. The that story is so much more spectacular than I realized. I thought it was simply Roan showed up, stole your painting, denied it. Not that he had a a total replica made with a oh, little yeah. finger. Oh, you want to see the two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm honestly curious how did, did you know it was that detail? No, so I literally thought it was just a promotional stunt. Like, boot, they they were mad at. And Roan's brilliant yeah, enough yeah, yeah. that he's like, "I'm doing this as your manager. You'll thank me for it." Yeah, like I thought he just like. But did you know he made a replica? I didn't. No, know no, that. no. I thought it was just Buddha was like, "Hey, Roan, say you stole my painting." And then, well, well no, I knew that because Erica contacted me and she was serious. It like, was real? Ro- uh, like Buddha is threatening to uh, sue everybody. Okay, no, I thought real it was- painting. <laughs> replica <laughs> yeah i mean they're identical hulk hogan they're totally the, the frames have the same like back everything it's the same exact that just shows you how diabolical roan is like the people, right. we, the people we have at that office we have some high iq <laughs> lunatics and roan no, may be one of them i'll never say roan doesn't have a high iq that <laughs> definitely that, does that is nuts. Another thing that I've always loved. So Buddha, for those, Buddha Ben, when I describe him to other people, like he's this crazy genius and he, he really likes two things in life, which are getting high and hibachi. Buddha Ben smokes weed, eats hibachi. Like the first time I remember he was traveling a lot. I don't know who told me. It was one of the first times I was on the road when you were there and like, what are we doing for dinner? And someone dead serious was like, well, Buddha's there, so we gotta do hibachi. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, I was told you scout the areas before you arrive looking for hibachi. It, I, I mean, I check near the hotels. Uh, that I, I do like the Google Maps and I see what's around there. But yeah, the, the, the I think that, that was probably rough and rowdy in uh, like the one that's like on the highway exit because one of the only restaurants they have in that area is that little hibachi place in the shopping center. That uh, it was actually great hibachi for the middle of West Virginia, which you wouldn't expect. And, and so Buddha looked looked great. He lost a decent amount of weight. I'm like, hey, you lost weight, and he's like, yeah, thanks, I have. And then we're you know at uh, Sal Ranch in LA just chilling, and I'm like, how's the hibachi? He's like, actually, there is none around here, and that's why I've lost weight. He's like, I have nothing to eat. It wasn't like it was working out trying to. He's like, yeah, there's just no hibachi, so me. I have nothing to eat. That's why I'm losing weight. 
the, yeah, there's a few. Yeah, there's no hibachi around here. That there's like just food trucks that that aren't good, and it's not real hibachi. It's not that's not even the hibachi experience. You can't really see them making the food in the food truck, so you, you lose the whole performance aspect. But uh, there's no good Chinese food out here. It's all it's all very like uh, like artisan Chinese food. Maybe it's very like uh, no high. chicken not, parms too, right? You like the chicken parms? Well, that's another key factor in me losing weight is I like one of the only foods that I did eat out here was chicken parm and like penne vodka. And that's all I ate out here once because it was only thing I liked. And I got really bad acid reflux from that because that was all I was eating. So then I had to cut that out entirely. And at that point, I don't I eat like smoothies and French fries now. <laughs> we're like my, we're my also diet. out in LA. And, and, and we're and he lives close. We're at the Sunset Strip. I mean, that's Hollywood. Sal Ranch is place we go. Like when we were there, that guy Banks from like FaZe Clan was there. And I guess celebrities just go there. Um and Boo's like, Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen one celebrity since I've been in LA. I'm like, really? That's weird because even walking around here, there's a bunch. He's like, I'm like, where do you go? He's like, Well, Target. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So that also makes sense. The other, the other story that's one of my favorite Buddhas is when you got profiled at CVS. Now, have you been back to CVS? Now, ever since. So tell. Have you heard this? No, story? I haven't heard this one. Tell this story for Eddie. This is, I just. I used to live uh, in Manhattan, right by CVS. It was one of the regular places I would go to, uh, just to get like any types of anything i would just go there and stop in cvs has everything and um not anymore they don't have anything i wouldn't suggest going there <laughs> but um <laughs> but I, I just went in one day to my regular cvs and one of my regular things i would go in and get is like two bottles of febreze because i would go and I'd spray my apartment with febreze because it smelled like blunts and uh i went in there to my regular i and i had my hood up because it, it's like it was cold it's new york city i had my hood up I go to the aisle and I hear like uh, security to aisle seven or whatever <laughs> on the loudspeaker. <laughs> I think nothing of it. <laughs> and I, I grab my two bottles of freeze. I start walking up front and I see like from across the aisle, like someone coming down and they're like looking over at me and I, I, I'm just keep walking up to the front and someone cuts me off and they're like, empty your pockets and i was like why <laughs> they're, like, they're like just you gotta empty your pockets like uh we'll see what you took and i should have caused more of a stir because like i realized i had the right to but you got, like you got profiled that's yeah there was but the line was in front of me and like you see all the people are staring at me now and and there's like it's causing a scene and i didn't want to escalate the scene so i just showed them what was in my pockets and it was my keys and nothing else. And, and then they told me I can go. And then, then once I left, I realized that I'd been wronged. And then, <laughs> and, and I felt bad. So, and then I, I stood in line and paid for my items, cause, and it, which was like, <laughs> I, I should have just left and, and bought them from somewhere else. But that was the last time I'll, I'll purchase something from CVS. He has boycotted CVS since then. And you were furious the next day. <laughs> Yeah. Once I got home, I, I realized how badly they had wronged me and, and that they caused a scene. They, they they tainted my character in front, front of this entire line. At so CBS. where do you get your Febreze from now? I, I've given up on the Febreze that uh, now, now, I mean, it's here. Weed is legalized. So it's kind of just like it's good to go. It, it's it's just a scent of my you can now. you you must have. 1000% been empathizing more than most white men with BLM and profiling and all that because you were a victim. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that they can target people. I don't want to uh, I don't want to say that I was profiled in that sense. That, well, uh, you were profiled because of how you look. Profiled, uh, you were way profiled. Worse than no, I oh, no, not but. not the same, but you were profiled based on your looks. Yeah, I would say I was I was more profiled looking like a like a stone i think i, I was well, profiled looking like stoner well, homeless like hippie type look like uh that is like I, that I, is your look like i might have like been like uh a homeless guy hanging outside of master square garden for like the fish concerts <laughs> and now i'm like i, I stumbled over to cvs and, <laughs> and i need febreze for my nitrous tanks or something like that so like, we talked a little bit and i think if you're serious i'm waiting on some sort of proposal 
for you, uh, from you. I've always been convinced somehow our cross will pass. Will, will uh, our paths will cross again, and we'll be back in the Buddha business at some point. Do you think that's a possibility, a probability? Like, what do you? The only time I'd ever be mad at you, Buddha, is if you somehow went to our competitor and just was doing the same job. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. I'm genuinely like, I don't happy know. for you. I don't even know who you would consider the the competitor at this point that who's like the, yeah that's a fair point but if you just went back to like a nine to five ish job i'd be like, oh come on you gotta come back but i don't think that's gonna happen but i think nah, there I are ways for us to work together yeah the buddha's buds is like i said it's the goal for it is to be a cartoon so i was trying to put together pitch decks and, and trying to pitch it to a network and then i've kind of came to the conclusion that that's that if i went to try to bring it to a network like uh like if say like Netflix or someone like that, I would be hoping that they gave me writers to try to write it with. And at the same time, I know writers who are hilarious that I think the move is probably to try to pitch it to you guys to try to actually do the cartoon and make it happen. Like, like I picture it being like a, a real cartoon, like adult swim style comedy cartoon. And yeah, that's, that's my goal with Buddha's buds. Also, I mean, the Buddha's Buds business, like I said, it's also a weed business. I don't know if you're trying to, if that's one thing in your I future. I actually, but... believe it or not, I get approached incessantly about people trying to get me in the dispensary, in the weed, you name it. People are approaching me about it. They see how we do, I do in other industries. They think weed. I mean, I've said many times, our foray into gambling, the last two legalized vices really are gambling and marijuana those are the two they're both huge just got industry. a recreational in new york i think just yeah. got they just uh did a bill so but, i can say this and, and well this is the day portland show we're getting a fascinating look into buddha but for people who look how i evaluate things his brain is like a one in a gazillion crazy. so when he's like a, a cartoon if we if we were able to work out the economics it's a no-brainer it, it it, I already, I don't know that what he's saying would work, but I'd have zero hesitation in putting my full force behind trying to make it work. Mm. Like there, there aren't many people who think like he does. Yeah. And even the relationship you have with the people at our company who I think get you for the most part, it, mm -hmm. it would be, and then our audience, I know it would work. So I, I am serious about it. Um, so you just got to get that over to see if we can't get it off the ground. Yeah, and, and when you say network, by the way, and I get what you're saying, there is no better network for something like that than us. I mean, we are a network now. Yeah, no, at that point, at that point, when I was thinking about it, I, I didn't even realize that that would be an option at the time. But that this is also before I had built the Buddha's Buds brand, really. That was more so when it was just an idea before I started doing the paintings and releasing them and, and building kind of getting people familiar with the character and the brand behind it. But yeah, no, that, that's, that's the goal really with it. But no, I want to put together, I, I haven't put anything together with you yet just because I want to put together a full email with everything laid yep. out and have it all look right. But So yeah, no, I'm excited to see that. I'm glad you came on and, and Eddie and I were talking about guests and who we want. And this is, the, this is, you know, this is Barstool 101. It's the unique characters that come through our world and our, universe and buddha ben's top of the list so thanks buddha it was good seeing you um and yeah. we'll be in touch soon yeah thank you for having me on appreciate right. you guys peace thank out you. eddie peace out, yeah, buddha. buddha bad man great to hear one, one of the great and, and we've had so many of them but you know i don't know where they came from i think maybe caleb brought Buddha. i don't really know i know he was doing something for a company i'm schmacked or something i'm like schmacked yeah, okay. which is basically an early they were a version of us, mm -hmm. and I actually didn't like them at times. There's one of the guys I think I liked, one I didn't. They, I, I feel like, really copied some of our stuff. I don't just mean the events, but literally, like, they had a bus with our shit on the bus. But a very popular company back in the day. Yeah. Weirdly, Spider, well, I guess because of Buddha, it was hanging out with this kid in L.A. called Huey Mack, who used to be, like, a rapper, yeah, was a rapper. in West Virginia. But isn't doesn't rap anymore. So Spider said Huey Mack. I'm like the rapper, and I don't even think Spider was like stunned kind of that I knew who he was talking about because mm -hmm. he didn't go by that name. And Spider only knew because he looked up his Instagram. But he was big at West Virginia back in the day. West Virginia was almost 
ground zero for I'm Schmacked. Yeah, no, I know that was it was definitely big when I was. And I school. always laugh because people say I'm schmacked, and probably Paul, uh, who's seen it all, would laugh too because like Barstool was, I'm schmacked before I'm schmacked was I'm schmacked, and we pivoted because we learned what I'm schmacked learned, which was throwing ragers at campuses while viral and while good has no long term sustainability to true money.